I want to start with your, your catching situation. You've seen some progress from Austin Hedges. Number one, what have you liked that you've seen from him defensively so far? Yeah, I mean, I think the you know everything that's that's been reported on Austin as far as you know his ability behind the plate, you know, receiving skills are, are very good. He's a really good blocker. You know, he's worked hard on you know on his on his transfers and his throws to second base and making accurate throws. And I mean, he's got a chance to be an impact defender for us behind the plate, and he's getting more comfortable with the major league. You know, with the major league scene and the speed of speed of play, and uh, you know, he's starting to starting his work work his way in the lineup. Do you want to see more playing time from him? I mean, I think like we, you know, view it when we talk to talk to the coaches. We have two catchers that are that are really good options. I think Austin's a, a young catcher that's learning and growing, and you know, with Derek, you have a guy that's you know that's obviously he's been on playoff teams and he's still a young veteran player as well. That's you know that's growing in his his own right. But you know, I think it's a situation where you know we always preach competition. You want guys to compete. Um, you know, Derek's done a really good job all year long. But to know that you know if if Derek needs a day off or needs you know needs you know goes to play first base, we've got Austin who's you know looking like he's going to be a very good major league catcher as well. You know, I asked Derek today about the idea of, of playing first base, just just to get him and Hedges in the lineup at the same time. Do you think that's something that we could see more of with with Derek Norris? Yeah, I mean, I think it's you know to have it in general like there's not. There's, no, there's not too many catchers or almost no catchers that play 140 games and you really don't want you know like and we've talked to Derek about that you know throughout the year is you know he may be more effective you know uh, you know playing you know in a situation where he's able to catch a few less games get his bat in the lineup at first base that may make his you know him and his game more fresh and his bat you know better as we go through I think to Derek's credit he wants to catch every day you know he wants to show that he can do it and you want players that, that want that but I think it's a nice luxury for us to have, knowing we have both guys that we can slide some guys around the field and you know get both in the lineup at times. You guys have tried quite a few guys at shortstop. What are we to make of of, of Jed Jerko of the Jed Jerko stint at shortstop? I think it's just again, it's just you know we really haven't found the answer there all year. You know we've looked, you know obviously you know, inside the organization with with Lexi and Clint, and then we've gone try to look outside the organization. We've tried different guys over there. Jed's got you know he's got really good hands. He's got a good feel for the game. You know he's got a good internal clock on how to play the game. So. You know, we just figured, hey, to try to get him, him and, and Spangenberg and Solarte in the lineup together. You know, yeah, we felt like he'd be an option for us at shortstop, and you know, and it's really a way for to get those three guys in the lineup at the same time. What do you consider to be your best defensive infield, though? You know, I think that's. I, I still, you know, like I think again, like you know, each guy's got got a different attribute that you know that that you know that you know that uh, that they take to the field. You know, I think you know Lexi for the most part is you know he's probably the rangiest of those guys, and he's played there. You know, for the most part this year, Clint's obviously had a lot of experience and is really, you know, sure-handed and is intelligent for the game. Uh, and Jed was played over there in college. You know, for the last, you know, the last time he was probably over there. Um, but you know, I think for, from our standpoint, we've we've been mixing and matching all year. We really haven't found that that set team that we're like, okay, this is the team that that we have that's going forward for us. And that's definitely still an area of improvement we've been looking to make. Does the trade of Will Venable allow for more playing time for for Melvin Upton or for Jankowski? Um. I think I think you know probably probably both both guys in a situation. I mean, I've talked to Murph and said that you know they're they're going to go compete for for that spot, you know, and you know hopefully we see you know like the way Upton swung the bat here the last week and in the last few days, you know if he does that you're going to want him to play, you know, and then Travis on the other hand against right hand pitching and his speed element and the defensive element, and you want him to develop so. Again, like that's an area where you, you you know you have competition. I don't think we're going to sit here and say, hey, you know this guy's our guy until they they earn that job. And you know, uh, and then and that's I think that's what you know Pat's talked to both guys about. And that hey, be ready to play when you come to the ballpark every day. And you know, the guy's playing the best, and we think gives us our best chance to win is going to play that day. Are you hopeful that Will Myers is going to go ahead and play for you guys again this season? Yeah, I would. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's 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 kind of a day-to-day -day thing right now, honestly. I mean, I think uh, you know, uh, as far as the doctors have said, the surgery from their standpoint went well, um, and now it's just a matter of him feeling, you know, feeling pain-free and and you know, and feeling like you know, 100% for us to get him back in, you know, back in the lineup. And it's really a situation where we come in every single day and kind of see where he's at, check it, and then you know, and then have that plan for that week, you know, based on how he's feeling, uh, you know, each day. So we'll see. I think we're. You know, I'd love to have him in the lineup, but we're not going to put him there if he's not 100%. Hey, when he comes back, though, where does he play? Yeah, it's. Uh, <laughs> I, I think again, like it's it's you know it's a situation. I think when we get there, I think right now we really just want to we want to have that conversation. You know, I think he's shown us. That's the good part about Will Myers. I mean, he showed us that he can play. You know, he can play in the outfield for sure in the corner. You know, I think he's learning center field. He's athletic and. 
you know, and uh, and has a chance to, to fill in there for us. The, you know, the 10 days, two weeks, whatever it was, he played first base. He was, you know, he, was, he, was, he played very good first base and I think opened everybody's eyes to the fact that, you know, he's, he looks very natural over there. He might be a plus defender there. And you see him every day out in the infield messing around at third base, second base, and he looks very natural there. So, you know, I think uh, we're just hoping we have that conversation between now and the end of the year and we get the bat back in the lineup and then we figure out the best spot for him to play. How do you evaluate the job that Pat Murphy has done? And is, is he someone that you're going to consider as a permanent manager when, when the time comes for that search? Yeah, I think, you know, I think with Pat, like, you know, I think his, his first first chance to be here at the major league level, I think he's, you know, he's definitely, he's grown and he's, you know, he's, I think he's learning a lot every day. I think he's mainly learning and getting around the team and getting to know the guys better and better. And I think the more he's gotten to know the, the players, you know, the more comfortable he's getting with himself and his decisions and choices. And, you know, I said, I've said all along, I think it's going to be a situation we get to the end of the year, you know, let everything play out and then make a call at that point in time. But, you know, I didn't, I don't want to, you know, I didn't want Pat thinking, okay, if I win, you know, win or lose these next three or four days, that's going to impact my job. It's like, no, we're, you know, we're honestly, you know, it's going to get to the end of the season, look at everything in, in you know, in total and just try to, you know, figure out who's the best guy for the job going forward and, and make a call at that point in time. The last thing I'll ask you, really the only thing I'm asking for the trade deadline, how, how stressful was that time for you leading up to the, to the trade deadline? And do you expect uh, that a couple more moves will happen before the August 31st deadline? Yeah, I mean, I think as far as July 31, I mean, it's probably, I mean, like, it's probably more, I mean, it's more exciting just because I think, you, you know, you have a chance to have some options and, you know, we had done our homework. I think our scouting group did a great job putting us in position, putting, you know, the, you know, myself in position to make good decisions. And, you know, I think it was, it's a spot that, you know, we, we got close on some things, but we ultimately didn't, didn't really get over the line on some things. And knowing that we'd also have a chance in August to make, you know, make possible deals, uh, you know, I, I think just because of the nature of the waiver process and how it works, you know, I wouldn't anticipate, you know, uh, a ton of moves here between now and August 31st. It's because, you know, I think there are teams that, that, you know, you have to pass guys through waivers and teams claim guys and block guys all the time. Uh, but we're still out there every day looking and, you know, and considering and seeing and trying to make the team better.